I can't forget. The doctors say, I know I shouldn't be, I have a chance of living, writing like, but I'm going to die. I'm sure this is the name of patients. Who hmm? are about to die. <laughs> That's unlucky. Death. Who even thinks about that? But. So 16 when is going to stop? But I don't even so know what that is. Writing helps me ease the pain. I miss everyone. What the hell am I supposed to do now? <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to do? It's too bad. Keep that, Drew. Don't lose it. Please. Drew! Yo, Drew! Yeah. What is that? It's yours, man. I don't want... What, what are you giving Just me? take it! Don't open that until... Well, you'll know when to open it. What are you talking about? Just trust me, you'll know when to open it. Why are you talking like that? I don't like when you talk like that, man. It's not over. Just trust me. Why are you giving up? It's over, man. It's not over. Why are you giving up? What the hell do you know? Just keep that, Drew. Don't lose it. Please. Just keep it. Just keep it. He died of leukemia at the age of 16. Lyndon Casey was my best friend. Before he died, he gave me his personal journal and told me not to open it until the time was right. I wonder what he wrote inside this journal and why would he give it to me. It is the last link between the three of us and Linda. Rachel and Meredith were not aware of the journal, but since we all were best friends, I thought we could read it together. Rachel and Meredith were hesitant to read their journal at first, as was I, but we needed to read it. We needed to read it for closure. We read the journal for hours hanging on to every word. We read it religiously. I realized why Lyndon wanted me to have this. It was a collage of the good times we had, the best things in life. It was his gift to us. Through his writings, we could see him again. As I read the journal, Lennon's words illustrated pictures in my mind. He brought me to another world. His world. A world where he was unable to cope with the matters near him. Lennon wrote about surreal pictures that helped him ease the pain. I can see him now, 
He's with me. He's only one step away. Normally throughout the day, you have a routine of things to do. Eat, grooming, chores, school, socializing, sleeping, etc. When you're given a death sentence, or a finite point, all these events become intense and surreal. One's senses become heightened. You are on alert like a frightened animal, taking everything in and trying to make every moment special, as if it may be your last. As my disease came, so did winter. Proving pathetic fallacy holds true in real life. By observing nature, we can feel a part of it, a part of the birth, growth, death, and rebirth cycle. These days I sit on cornerstones and count the time and quarter turns to ten. Please don't confront me. The human spirit needs to know that it matters, knows that it can make a difference. What is my purpose? What is my meaning in life? We shared so many memories together during our friendship. <laughs> Lee's blowing! Woo! Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna try to thank them all we have the greatest meeting places too. The one at Garlock Gardens sticks out in my mind the most. Whenever something was wrong, we would be there for each other. And the group of us grew to be best friends. One of these days best friends. Forever! <laughs> I'm gonna sit down and write along I don't think it will hit me that Lyndon is gone until we go to that same meeting spot by the lake and one person is missing. One person is not there. It's not fair that we can't keep all these memories in such a great friendship in existence. But I am going to have to learn to let go. I have to let go. But how? His death isn't something I can deal with easily, or with a hundred people around. So sometimes I go to the forest and think about it, by myself. Hurry up, hurry up. You're always lagging behind. How are you feeling? Fine. Are you in pain? Why are you asking me these questions? I'm just kind of worried about you. Shut up. I tried to help him like a loving sister would. I tried to help him. I tried to help him cope. He wouldn't let me in. He was trying to be too brave. His spirit was as free as a bird, and I'll know he'll get his chance to fly. One of these days, I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter to all of good friends I know. One of these days One of these days One of these days The next day we went to my meeting spot. We had not been here since September. We had not been here since the day he told us he had leukemia. We came here to bid our final farewell to remember together. This was our spot, our monument, and no one could take that away from us. Down in LA, all the way to Nashville. So, this is it. Thanks for the journal. I would get you something, but you know I'm poor. <laughs> Take it easy. 
His spirit was as free as a bird, and I'll know he'll get his chance to fly. Well, this is where it all began. And this is where it's gonna have to end. One of these days I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter To all the good friends I've known One of these days One of these days One of these days The human spirit needs to know that it matters. Knows that it can make a difference. What is my purpose? What is my meaning in life? <laughs>